Well, welcome. Glad to have you with us this morning. We're on the Caddo River up in Arkansas. We have a little piece of land up here, about 50 acres on both sides of the river. And uh, I've invited a bunch of young men to come up here with me on teenage boys uh, to discuss with them the revelation of uh, the whole process of spiritual growth and maturity. We're going to be here for a few days. We're glad to have you with us. We'd like for you to join us. We're going to have meetings here uh, in the mornings at nighttime. We're going to do some real early morning meetings as well. So kind of want to introduce you to it, see where what uh, you, part of this you would might be interested in. I hope it's all of it. But I'm going to go ahead and start this morning. Join us as you desire. Get your Bibles. And and uh, gentlemen, let's do it now. I've, I have some things in my heart I want to share with you. And I do hope that you brought your Bibles and notebook because I want to teach rather than just minister because you guys need to have some knowledge and revelation on how to, where to take some of this in your life because we're going to go on a journey here. <clears throat> and uh, it's going to be a pretty good revelation. Now, I know you guys are exposed to some phraseology and terminology, but I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to assume you don't know. That way I make sure you do know. You understand? even though you've heard certain terms. And uh, I'd like for you to write these names down. Now these are all Greek words, but by the end of the week, we're gonna highlight each one of those. These are the five stages of spiritual growth. <clears throat> now what the purpose of this is, not only revelation, but location. As I'm sharing it with you, I want it to be able to, you able to see where you're at and locate yourself. So five stages of spiritual growth. And uh, also with your, this group, I understand this was a selected group to let you folks know. We selected them based upon those that are not just believers, but really desire to be disciples. Now that's a world of difference. I've had a lot of them up here that are believers uh, and that's fine, I don't mind teaching, but these are some of the sons of God that I've been working with for a number of years that myself I have personal confidence in. Uh, we put a very select group of men together and brought them up and these are men who's chosen to be disciples uh, and not just believers so I'm looking forward to all right let's go with these terms <clears throat> napios n-e-p-i-o-s napios now leave some two or three lines in between each one maybe three or four we're going to do five of napios n-e-p-i-o-s Podion. p-a-i-d i-o-n P-A-I-D-I-O-N, Pateon. Technon, T-E-K-N-O-N. Weos, H-U-I-O-S, Weos. Now I'm not a Greek scholar, so I think it's, it's got a lot of different, it's like Spanish can roll those R's. Well, the Greek has an H to Hriwa, Hia, you know, but. Arkansas, we us. And then the fifth one, Pater. P-A-T-E-R. Sometimes P-A-T-Y-R, but. <clears throat> All right, now we're gonna take you through those in the next few days and uh, help you understand these spiritual growths and then locate yourself. Now look, this is as much biological as it is spiritual, which these are really true biological uh, Greek words that define uh, growth in a biological. So let me give a real quick highlight on your uh, biological order, but then I want to take you through the spiritual ramification of it. The, the uh, napios literally means no speech. That is a true baby. It's a baby that does not talk. They gibberish. And when I say no speech, that doesn't mean no sound, right? That you just, it's not legible, it's not understandable. It means no speech. So there is a time in your spiritual life that you should not be talking, right? You should be learning. And then uh, potty on is your P-O-T-T-Y potty stages. This is when you get up a little bit older and you start uh, wearing diapers and, and you go through that whole potty stage and, and the diaper stage and then being weaned from diapers, start to learn how to feed yourself. That's actually potty on. And then tech on is your teens, 13 through 20. It's your teen years. I will be discussing that one with you guys. Also, the most uh, dramatic seven years of your entire life. And uh, you will change more bi uh, biologically, physiologically, uh, intellectually, mental than any other time in your life. It is the most dramatic seven years of your entire life. 
And what happens at that time is you have, it's almost a travel of hormones. You come into puberty, your hormones begin to develop, and uh, man-major changes take place with your life. You're driven a lot by hormones, which means you are being fed a, a, a chemical. And that chemical is, and there's a number of different ones. And every one of these chemicals are causing a reaction. So a lot of times you're being motivated by a chemical reaction rather than an intellectual uh, or by the Holy Spirit leading it. Just, it's just chemically based, as simple as that. And uh, you will probably, you're being dumped for seven years uh, dumping into you a strong hormones, no, just not only testosterone, believe it or not, somewhat estrogen, a number of other ones, but uh, testosterone is your primary hormone being pumped into you. It's being pumped into you for a number of years, six, seven strong, hard years, and then your body begins to learn to uh, organize it and utilize it. Now, it takes a while to do that. And that's when you find yourself driven in some areas, sports, athletic, sex, aggression, ag uh, assertive, uh, angry, mad at times, quick to go off. Uh, your mom says something, your dad says, and you just, you never would have done it before, but now you just find you just want to get in their face and you don't really know why. And what it is, you're just having that aggressive male testosterone. And testosterone is not a um, sexual drug, it's an aggressive drug. So it can be, it can manifest itself in a number of ways of aggression. Sexual is one of those. There, you become predators with the girls. You begin to pursue them, and man, you just seem to be motivated with girls, girls, girls. And uh, at that point, uh, it can it can begin if you're not uh, uh, curb it right, know how to start learning how to organize and and administrate your hormones. In other words, you've got to learn how to direct that and uh, do it properly. One of the dynamic ways is athletics, working out, gym. You get to burn off a lot of testosterone that comes in in that seven year period. So that's really, really good. It, it doesn't burn it off, but it keeps it in check where at least you're not just driven all the time. So we'll take you through that one. Weos uh, simply means uh, fully matured. Now you come into a maturity in your life and at that point you uh, are now a representative, an ambassador uh, I love the scripture that says, for unto us a child was born, unto us a son was given. And that shows you those two different words. Unto us as a small child was born, baby was born, but unto us a weos was given. The scripture uses that term. So Jesus Christ being the baby born in a manger, but he wasn't given. He wasn't reliable, it's not trustworthy, he wasn't uh, ready for it yet, just a babe. And he uh, learned obedience by the things he suffered. So he had to come through a stage of biological, physiological, uh, emotional, psychological, as well as spiritual. So those stages are all very relevant there that once you come to a place of weos, then you'll be able to be sent to represent. That means now you've come to maturity. You won't substitute, you'll represent. Uh, you'll do exactly uh, what you're told without having to have a better idea or another way of doing it. Uh, now that doesn't mean you can't you know, suggest, if you would, ideas when you're working with people, but it's that takeover syndrome concept that I have a better way. And uh, when men start telling me, well, you know, I've got a better idea, I'll always say, no, you just got another idea. You get 10 men there that knows what they're doing, you're gonna have 10 real good ideas. Probably not one is better than the other one, it's just a different idea. It may be more uh, usable today, but not as good tomorrow in another situation. So you can't be arrogant about life. But that's we us. Pater, it just means fathers. Now, you're no longer being trained for yourself, you're no longer growing into Christ for, on your own. Uh, now you're actually, now your attention focuses entirely away from you. We us focuses away from you representing someone else. And then Pater is, I really am here for you. I want to help you find what I have found. Now when you can do that, that's when you come into the Pater stages. Now we'll be going through all five of these on, uh, on this river up here at the time you're here. And I wanted to find them to you, but let me show you some scriptures <clears throat> uh, if, uh, so that you can just follow along with me and understand some of the biblical things. Look at, uh, let's see, we got two I want, one I'd like to give to you, Psalms in the book of Job. Look at Psalms chapter 90. Psalms chapter 9, I'm going to read one verse, <clears throat> and that's verse 12. 
It says, so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. So what I'm doing today is teaching you to number your days. You have to realize your days are numbered and they're numbered all the way from a napios to a, to a pater. And uh, the scripture says, my times are in his hands. So these times or seasons are in his hands and they're not, um, and here's what I want you guys to get. You got to get this. America and I suppose other nations have really destroyed, I'll show you where the satanic power comes in. They've really destroyed the concept of time and years. In fact, uh, let me show you something out of the book of Daniel. I'll come right back to all this. Daniel chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. Let me read this to you. <clears throat> Speaking of uh, the spirit of the Antichrist. He shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws. So what happens is in the realm of the satanic, he seeks to change times and laws. The reason is my times are in his hands and I have met very few who will wait for their seasons to mature. Very few, especially teenagers. Teenagers will not wait. They are driven with now, now, now. I want it now. I want to get, I want a girlfriend now. I want a truck now. I want a vehicle now. I want to get married now. And next thing you know, you're married 18, 19. Next thing you know, what you know, you got two or three kids. You're 22. And all of a sudden, the world collapses on you. And it does. And misery is unbelievable at that time. The next five years, you will, you will really be terribly frustrated because you're not ready. Your time is not ready. Now, time, I mean, I say this. Here's what Satan says. When you turn 18, you become a man. So if we're going to use Greek words, what does that say? We are. Huh? We are. We are. So now you're 18. You're no longer a technon. You're a weos. Well, if you're going by the word time or years, we'll use the word years here, you're really not a man at 18 anyway, but the, 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 the world says you are because we're not going by years, we're going by seasons. Now seasons, we're not talking about seasons in the four seasons as much as we're referring to seasoning. You understand what I mean by that? You got to marinate in it until you're seasoned in it. Then you're palatable. Then your people can partake of you. Then they can experience your, your depth or your maturity. So really what you're wanting to do is learn to wait upon the Lord and understand the, your season that you're in. Another, let's see, I give you uh, four uh, worldly terms for age 13. I am now a teenager. I don't know what that means. You know, but there you are, you wake up, wow, I'm 13. Well, you don't feel any different you did before you went to bed the night before. But it's that thing. 13, 16, 18, and 21. 21, 21 is now your legal. Legal to do what? <laughs> you see? But they call it now you're legal. Well, the only thing you're legal to do is buy alcohol. I mean, that is it. It makes a big word on now you're legal, but the only thing that you can do now is buy alcohol. I think they've dropped that age, haven't they? Certain states. Huh? Certain states. In certain states, you can do it at 18, huh? <clears throat> so you can see 75% of our car, all car accidents on the road today are by teenagers. So that can tell you something cerebral is missing. It hasn't physiologically changed yet to make that proper judgment in driving. If 70, 75% accidents are teenagers, that tells you they surely don't need to be buying beer at 16 and 18. They, you know, so you're looking at the problem. But anyway, we're gonna go through that a little bit, but I'm trying not to go biological as I want to go spiritual. So now we know that teach us to number our days and let me know how frail, how, how uh, vulnerable I really am. So if you will let him number your days, what he will do, he'll take you from the time you transition from a napios to a pation. It isn't years. You understand that? It isn't years from technon to weos. So you come into a technon at 13 and then you're weos at 21. So that's what Satan would like you to believe. It's a season. So what does that mean? Huh? A certain time period. Is a certain time? Has to do with your maturity. Certain maturity. Yes. So now you're back down to could it be possible that you could be a technon uh, 
for 20, 30 years. Or a Napios at 60. Wow. True or not? The answer is yes. You've seen a lot of men I have at 60, 65 years of age throwing fits like you would when you were seven, eight, and nine years of age as a, as a potty on. So I've seen 60 year old potters and the biological still acting like a six, seven year old throwing a fit because he didn't get his way. Get mad. If you remember Ahab, the typical story of Ahab, he, uh, he wanted this guy's vineyard and he didn't get it. He went to talk, Ahab being a king, he went to this guy and talked to him about getting the vineyard. The guy said to him, look man, I can't give you my inheritance. This was given to me. This come down from my, my, four, uh, my ancestors, forefathers. And <clears throat> this is my inheritance. I'm not going to give you that. He goes home. Now look at this. this we're talking about a king. <laughs> he goes home, gets up into his royal estate, gets in the bed, turns his face toward the wall and starts pouting. Now we're talking about a full-blown man because he didn't, he didn't get, well here comes his wife mother and she walks in, Jezebel, and says, what's your problem? What's with all the depression? Well, I didn't get this vineyard that I wanted. And at that point she changed it from a wife to a mother and said, it's no problem, I'll get that for you, sugar. You just sit there and be depressed and I'll bring you happiness in a moment. So he went out and kills the guy, brings him back the title to the vineyard. Now that's really what happened. So you're talking about a, a full grown king over there sulking in the bed until his wife turns into a mother and gets the little boy the car. Yeah. And now he's happy again. Now that's what I'm talking about. So he kind of missed some of his spiritual growth, if you would. I mean, maybe. Maybe, I mean, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. So I'm <laughs> just throwing it out there, man. All right. I'm just concerned. Yeah, that's all, that's all it is. All right, now look at this. Let me give you another scripture here. I love these verses here. Job 14, 5. Job 14, 5. Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee, which with God, thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. Now this is referring to your years that are numbered and that you're, and those, those uh, seasons have been set boundaries on those and those boundaries should not be transgressed. So now we've learned two things about this already, about your spiritual growth. You go through a spiritual season, biological as well as spiritual, right? You go through a season. And so let's say this, that God is monitoring joy. We'll use this term that since God has determined Joey's uh, and numbered his days and his season and, and his time, if you would. Now, Joey is going from Technon to Weos. And by the way, y'all are, that's why you're here. So now we locate your Technon area by the Lord. In other words, we find his boundaries or perim perimeters on you as a Technon. Now remember, I'm not gonna talk biological right now, even though you're biologically teenagers, right? We're not talking about that. What we're going to be referring to is measuring, teach us to number our days, measure them so we will know where we are, locate us, so I will know where I'm at spiritually when I leave here. What level of maturity am I at? Same thing denoting, if now God has set you into this certain area, Joey, you're at a certain time, if you would, season in from Technon to Weos, you're maturing. That boundary has been set. You are to remain in that level, that area, until he changes that, because he set the boundaries. So are you guys looking at the problem here? There are, there are boundaries set and there are times set. Now look at Daniel, well you don't have to. Remember what Daniel says, seeks to change what? The times. the times and the law. So let's go to the word times for a moment. Denoting he would like to see you move outside your season. But let me give you another scripture here that also brings a revelation to the next stage of it. In Isaiah. You want us to turn there? Uh, yeah, go ahead and turn to that one. Let's read this together. Isaiah talked about it, t chapter 10, in verse 13. <clears throat> 
Now speaking of Satan that fell from heaven, it says, For he saith, By the strength of my hand I have done it, and by my wisdom. Now listen closely. For I am prudent, and I have removed the bounds of the people. So now you're looking at both in Daniel and Isaiah, two things that says that Satan has done. What has he done? Now forget the word laws for a moment, which are laws, ordinances, so that God said, but he removed two things. He tampers with two things in your life. Times, Times and, boundaries. and boundaries. So now both of those are, they correlate to your maturity. God has numbered your times, if you would, your seasons. He's numbered your days. Then he puts on you perimeters or restraints or restrictions within that time zone, that season. You are not to come out of there until you are ripe, not old. You understand that? What I mean by that? You have to season, not years. If it was years, then we don't have to teach this. But since it's seasons, it has to be sampled. Your parents sample that, leaders sample that, your friends sample you. They're partaking of you at all times, and they're finding out, said, man, I'd say to Johnny, Johnny, I, I don't think we can use that guy. Well, what's the problem? I, he's just not, he's not seasoned. Well, what's another word? Ready. He's not ready. Now, he may be 40. You follow? He could be 50. He could be 15. So if I brought you up here, and all you guys are here, and I say, uh, Johnny, of course, I don't, we're not going to get across the river, but what I was going to ask you guys, do, if you'd help me finish maybe rocking that wall, because me and Johnny, and, and we're doing a lot of that work, and we could get, you could do it with all these guys. We could do it in three hours, what would take us three days. Well, I'm just going to ask you to do it, and you didn't have to. This is not imperative. But then I'd say, uh, Johnny, we need to appoint... You know, he has, he has appointed our boundaries. We need to appoint someone to oversee that. So I'm going to remove you from being there, Johnny, and I want you to appoint someone to oversee that. Now, two or three guys would come into mind, and I would say to him, I don't think so, Johnny, because they're not. What does that mean? Season. Huh? Right or season. Yeah, so what, that, what would that mean to me then in doing that pragmatic job? Not mature enough to handle it. Not mature enough, in other words, not mature enough. Therefore, they would not be mature. ready. Ooh, brother. I mean, I mean, when you come out deep, it wades. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, all right, not mature. Therefore, they won't be. Give me some words necessary. Ready for the task. Ready for the task. Responsible. 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 Accountable. Reliable. Reliable. Yeah. Dependable all these. You see where I'm coming from? It has nothing to do with you personally, but do people take it personal? I say, uh, I did this. Uh, I said to Johnny, I don't want to take so-and-so down uh, the uh, Buffalo River when we go, but I, we'll take Joey. You see, because the, the difference is so-and-so will not be responsible. Joey will. So the problem of it is I have to tell this guy, get out of bed. I have to tell him, get ready. I have to tell him, we need firewood. I have to tell, 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 tell. You follow me? Well, if I'm going to do that, I may as well do it. So if we're on the river, then I'd say, all right, Joey, here's what we really need to do. It's, it's going to be apparent people are going to have to have places to uh, campsites we need to define. They're going to have to have firewood for the evening fire, for the meetings. But you, don't, you only have to mention it one time. And then, when you go down the river, we get to these places, I show up around that campfire, there's a nice campfire built, there's wood already that you follow me. That's responsible, mature, accountable, reliable, dependable, trustworthy, punctual. All of those terms are uh, uh, words defining maturity. That person has come to season. So now, once they have come, now Joey is, and I'm, I'm using him because I worked with him on the river, Joey is in that season with me. You follow me? And God has set the boundaries of Joey. He will stay there in that season until what? Huh? Until the appointed time he can go to the next level of maturity or responsibility or accountability. If he proves himself faithful in little, ruder over much. Now, let's go to this in a very pragmatic way. 
We own this 15 acres here on Caddo River. Beautiful, pristine, crystal clear river. This place looks like a park from in New York. This is beautiful. But I, am I gonna live forever, physiologically? No, so what I wanna do, turn this over to a bunch of teenagers that like to drink and come in here and cut donuts with their pickup truck, you follow me? That's what we're talking about. I don't wanna do that, I'm not gonna do that. So eventually somebody's gotta take, you're looking at uh, the leaders of Marshall. That's right. This is it, you're looking at it. Because I'm not gonna be here forever, Jeff's not gonna be here. In fact, I'm 62, uh, Joey, how old are you? 21. 21, how old are you? My, 21. 21, so both of y'all are 21. Well, y'all are men today. <laughs> I didn't know that. I was so, well, all right, we need to get rid of them. We need some babies here. Okay, so you both are 21. I'm 60, we'll say 22, 62, 40 years. Well, let's say that I live another 22. You'll be 40 and I'll be 80, right? So you're looking at my, num my days are already numbered, man. So at 80, you're living now on borrowed time. You're allowed 70. If by reason of strength you make it to 80, I'll make it to 80 without any problem. But because of reason of strength, <laughs> no, that's right. So, but it, you're looking at the same thing. That, well, can we do this forever? No, somebody in this group's got to become spiritual, mature, looking at life differently than just living for yourself. Because there's a lot we're, we're planning for, a lot we're doing. So... At this point, I thought, you know, maybe my own son would have a part of this. Maybe he would in the future. But you understand, I'd, I'll take you and you before I would take him. Because you have to have responsibility, maturity, accountability. That's all in maturing spiritually, not physiologically. So, stay with me, if you would, on a spiritual revelation of these five words, you're looking at, this is not about numbering of your years, that's biological, is it not? It's 13, 16, 18, 21, that's biological. Satan tells everybody, you're, you're a teenager at 13, uh, you're coming into maturity at 16, you're a full grown man at 18, you can drink whatever you want to at 21. Wow, what a great level of maturity, what a goal, <laughs> what a goal. So, but you're looking at, from God's perspective, there's two things he's done. He set your season, and within that season, he set a perimeter. So this is what it looks like right here, if you would. This is, this is myself. I'll use this little nail sitting here. This is me, and I have this mount to fulfill in my, in my technon years. I must maximize this full potential of maturity. As soon as I am, let's say this little piece of wood comes out here, this knot, the fence comes down by the Lord. The boundary set. Now the fence comes down and I'm able to take another larger perimeter. So all of your life, if you could look at it even from this perspective, I don't have it here. Yeah, I will. Let's start off with this cup inside the center. And what this ref reflects on, this is your beginning of your spiritual growth and walk. You have a very small perimeter to live in. If you fulfill it ma maturely and responsible, it goes to the next level, like a, 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 a salad bowl. And then, a, then you have your dinner plate, you follow me? And then you have your full maximum perimeter that God's given you, full boundaries. Now that's what you're wanting to do, you're wanting to go from, from little by little, line upon line, precept upon precept. Though thy beginning was small, yet thy latter end shall greatly increase. And you're possessing and driving out and possessing, driving out and possessing, driving out and possessing all your life until you come to full maturity. I do want you to know, I don't think I've come to full maturity. I think my wife will verify the fact that I'm not fully mature. But I will say this, that what happens, the more enemies you drive out, anger, bitterness, hostility, unforgiveness, resentfulness, uh, oppression, depression, strife, uh, all those things will be driven out. You start off right here, interestingly enough, you're totally self-absorbed when you meet Christ. You're a napios. You need to shut up. Now, I'm going to tell you what's interesting. Here you are, you're born again, and you're a napios. Have you ever seen on TV when a superstar football player, basketball player gets born again? The next thing you know, they're on TBN, they're on national TV. Have you ever seen that? Yeah. Now, if, if um, how, how old's your child, Jeff? Um, two and a half months. So let's have, here, uh, let's have your baby up um, on the platform next Sunday morning ministry and sharing the testimony. 
think he could do it. <laughs> yeah. You see how foolish that is? If you use a spiritual common sense, as same as you would natural laws, you would not put a one-year-old or a two-year-old in Christ up there to tell people about Jesus Christ. Because you actually could be able to say, without any disrespect, what in the world do they know about Jesus Christ? And yet we do it because what it does, it's money. It's fame, it's, uh, it's uh, what's it, you gotta have your, what's it called? Huh? Ratings. ratings, it's 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 ratings, it's popularity. Uh, you make money all these boys. It's prostitution. It's all it is. It's spiritual prostitution. So you're taking the napios, and they just got born again. Well, according to the word napios, tell me what it means again. So could I say, without offense, shut up for a couple of years and learn Jesus Christ, right? Learn the Word of God, learn the ways of God, learn the kingdom of God, learn the politics of Jesus, the social structure, and come into it and relax until the appointed time to the next zone, Pateon. Now, at Pateon, you can talk. Now, let me make something clear. You can talk, but somebody's going to get pooped on. And that takes place. We, we permit that. We don't mind changing your diapers. We'll give you a little bit of, of opportunity, a little bit of a, a freedom here, if you would. And uh, we're knowing that you're going to make mistakes. Well, you can drive the old yeller, you know, pickup truck we have up here. And you, and you might ding it up. You might hit a tree with it. Comes with the turf. You're in it. But then you go through the whole potty on stage, and then it's the next level. I remember up here. Y'all know my truck, and to you that are with us this morning, that I have a 1986 Toyota pickup truck that's 26 years old now, and it looks just great, it's immaculate condition. And my oldest son, Daniel, when we came out, he wanted to drive it. Now, I'm thinking he's 16, 17, and I told him two things. Do not lock up the brakes and do not spin those tires. This is a, uh, you know, it's an antique, if you would, a really classy little Toyota pickup truck that's in immaculate condition. What do you think you did within the first five minutes? Right here in front of me. Peels out, takes off, does a run around here, comes back around and just slides in. I just looked down and I said, don't ever ask to drive my truck again. And he hasn't since. See, because what happened was, Maybe his fault, maybe mine. And that means my fault would be I did not rightly discern his season. Obviously, he was big. He looked like, you know, looked like he could. But right here, he had a big body with a tiny little pea brain. <laughs> that was the problem. He, hasn't, he had not matured to be responsible. Now, I said, I, I said to him, and it was a terrible, it was a ridiculous question. Well, would you do that to your own truck? Well, yeah. That's why I said, well, of course you would. Of course you did. I would too. I did when I went through that, that uh, Technon stage. But so you got the revelation, right? You see this. Now, let me show you some other scriptures here that will be vital for you guys to, to walk through. And I'm going to show you the word Technon for a moment. Just a little interesting statement about the word Technon. So now we know Satan changes the boundaries, right? And he changes the times. So that means don't change. Stay in it until the appointed time of the Father, Father not Satan, who's removing your primitive. And here's what he'll say, ain't no reason why you can't do that. You're mature enough to handle that. You could do that. I don't know why Dad don't let me do that. I could do that. You see the problem? You're pushing when nobody acknowledges that or recognizes it but you. So let's take it in the spiritual. Well, I don't know why they don't let me speak. I don't know why they don't let me talk. I mean, I'd like to, I, I, wanna, I think it's time for me to share and preach and teach a little bit in this fellowship. I don't see why I get resisted all the time. You see the problem. It doesn't happen that way. First of all, we're already told, don't ever let a novice minister or share or lead. What's a novice? A rookie. A rookie, buddy. Don't let him do it. And yet, Here's the thing, don't let a young man take a position of spiritual leadership in the body of Christ. And all over America, you got youth leaders. <laughs> That's just, that is crazy to me. All right, let me give you this and then we'll go back to giving some more later uh, on different areas. But let me show you a good one on the word technon. Look at 1 John chapter 3. 1 John 3, I'm going to go over there with you. <clears throat> 
Let's go to verse 9. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. Now listen to this next verse. This is a really quite a revelation right here. In this the children, technon, the technons of God are manifest. Now notice this term. In this are the technons manifest. You got that? Listen to what it says. And the technons of the devil. Of all areas that we find that Satan identifies himself to as a father, it is in the technons, not any other area. He has more, he runs more havoc, causes more problems, more conflict, more uh, domestic stress and strife, more car accidents, and the list goes on with technons than anything else. He chooses the technons, the teenagers, to, to make most of his problems in the earth today. So here he uses the term, listen to this, we now know the seed. You see, his seed remaineth in him. So what you have, seed denoting there, uh, also not, not only spore at times, but uh, sperma. So you're talking about a reproduction regardless of spore by seed, or sp uh, sperma is a Greek word for the seed of Christ. Christ is the seed of Abraham, seed of David, sperma. Either way, you're talking about a reproduction. So now you're looking at Satan reproduces the technon, Christ reproduces a different type of technon. They're both reproduced by the seed. But then he goes and he says, but herein is where the difference between, if you would, the manifestation or the difference between the technons of Christ and the technons of the devil, he said they're made manifest <clears throat> that we do not sin. And then he goes on, who serves doth righteous, doth not righteousness, is of the satanic technon, neither he that loves not his brother. That's also the same concept. You follow me? So now you're looking at, herein is the fact, is it possible that Satan can train you young men as technons and cause a lot of conflict and havoc? Now look, I don't mind telling you, and I've done this with you two brothers with, with your mama. I've gone through it, I don't know how many times because of the problems, the conflicts, the difficulties you've given her at those stages. Now let me ask you, as you've gotten a little older, hasn't that quit and it's subsided, right? Because you find, had not yet for you maybe? No, it's getting a lot better. Yeah, and it will as you get a little older because it's really, you'll find it's not her, it's you that's changing. And when you look at, when you start changing, you look at life from a different perspective. And, and it, it does, it's not as important to get your way as it was in, when you're younger. So you're looking at, there's a real difficult, now see my son, youngest son, he's going through right now, the, now he's uh, 20, but what he's doing because he's so emotionally immature, if you would spiritually speaking, he's gotta go back and redo his technon years because he's, he's got to go back and redo it through Christ so that Christ can bring him through that maturity because he missed it. He missed it with selfishness, self-centeredness, self, all, self, self, self. He missed all that. So now we got to go back and try it again. So he could be doing this technon season, right? We'll say this is it. He could do that for how long? Years. 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 There's no end to it. There's so many people still at 50, 60, 70 years of age, and they still act like irresponsible, immature uh, teenagers. Oh, that was a tick. I shouldn't have flipped it off. I should have killed it. Okay, he'll find it again. Yeah, yeah, he'll make his way back up the old pant leg. All right, so you see where we see where we're coming from on it. It doesn't really matter if he's 20. He's really, according to the spiritual maturity, he may be still in the levels of Pateon, really not even in Technon. And ironically, once you finally get into that total realm of darkness, now you go right back to the level of Napios, where you shouldn't be saying anything because what you've got to say has no truth to it, no reality to it whatsoever. And that's where you're, you're girding up the loins of your mind and, and, and being careful that you even have to be careful how you give to that, you see? Because man, it don't matter if he's 20 years of age, he's gonna, he's gonna act like a little tiny spoiled boy. Yeah. So it's very wise that you don't do it. So you gotta be real careful with it and how you handle it, how you operate with it because it's a dangerous situation. So, all right, y'all got any questions on some of this? Technons of the devil, give me some example of it. Just selfishness and anger, disrespect. Selfishness, anger, disrespect, 
Yeah, let me give it to you if we're going to go spiritual for a moment. Have you ever turned or seen turned over to, or have you ever seen this? A person's gift or anointing takes him public. And yet he may, he may be a, a uh, potion or technon in spiritual maturity. So money starts coming in, they misappropriate it. Women make themselves available to them, they misappropriate it. And yet they're supposed to be in a position of maturity. In other words, here's what's happened, that your gift, the Bible says your gift will make room for you and bring before kings. Your gift will be greater in potential than your maturity to handle it. And on today with TV, uh, with um, TV, internet, all this stuff that's available, you can go broad and large fast be, uh, before you're mature enough to handle that situation. The reason you have so much misappropriation of funds and so much sexual problems in the ministry today is because men have come into positions of leadership without maturity. Their gift is greater than their, their growth. So the problem of it is, you, you're going to find some serious difficulties at that time. So if you're going to use the term napios, potion, technon, weos, pater, and look at yourselves, and each one of those are governed by two primary ordinances, what are they? I gave them to you all ago. Seasons? Seasons and boundaries. And boundaries. These are the ordinances of your spiritual growth. In every area, I'm involved in a certain season, and in that season, I have a perimeter of restraint by the Lord Jesus Christ. When I fulfill that maturity, then I can go to the next level of growth and maturity or the next level of responsibility. Now, once you come to that level of maturity, then it comes to this perspective in what you deal with delegated authority. So once I can delegate to you, Joey, rather than, all right, Joey, you come with me and work with me. And all the time we're working together, I'm actually telling you what I need to get done. You follow me? There should come a day where I don't do that now. I'm not bringing you alongside and telling you what to do. Now you're with me, but you are delegated authority under the Lord Jesus Christ. He's delegated to you this area. This is your metron. This is your measure of rule. You're responsible for your metron, your measure of rule. So at that point, no one else is. So you would come in, we'll say, to the kingdom enterprise, the apostolic campaign, and you'll look around and say, where is my metron? And that will be measured by what? Maturity. Can you be, uh, and you'll be tested by, can you be told what to do before you can do what needs to be done? Can you serve? Can you come under? Can you, can you be delegated to? Can you be reliable, uh, responsible? Uh, do we have to war, debate, argue? Uh, I say, here's what I'd like to have done. Well, you know, I think there's a better way of doing it. Do we have to do that or can we get it done? <laughs> do you follow me? And if you do that, then you're not ready. At that point, you shouldn't be doing it, not in the kingdom of God. So there's a big trial that goes on and trying and, and finding out, locating where we all are with our spiritual growth and maturity. So this is what we're going to be doing up here for these next three or four days, discussing these matters, find out where, where we relate and realizing that Satan is the one who wants to change your seasons, times. He's the one who also wants to change your boundaries. And he will feed your mind full of... Uh, egotistical, arrogant thinking. I can do that. That ain't no big deal. I can do that just good as he could. All of those thoughts, can you imagine Jesus meditating those? Now, Jesus might be able to say, I could do that better than him. I don't think he'd even tolerate that thought. I don't think he'd compete himself to the next guy. He wouldn't measure himself by another man. He said, I think that guy can do that. That's, that's great. So you stay out of all that suke pride of the teenage pride uh, and by the way, there's as much teenage pride in spiritual technons, because we, we have spiritual technons in the church in Marshall. What my job is to do in the fellowship there, one of those as an overseer, is to profile every individual that I possibly can learn to have how much grace God gives me to profile and all. And I think I've got almost everybody in that fellowship profiled. And that is understanding where they are, locate them, size and measure. I use the term size and measure. So when I'm in the presence of somebody, I size and measure two primary things. What I size and measure is that is your spiritual growth, the season that you're in. Then I say size and measure, are they rested in that measure or are they striving against the boundaries? Are they trying to knock the walls down all the time, pushing, pushing, pushing? And uh, that means then let them go until they season. Keep them in the presence of the S-O-N, 
as in tomatoes with SU in until it finally ripens. They just need more time on the vine, and that's what we give y'all. So that's how you size and measure everybody, and then you size and measure their seasons and times, and you size and measure their boundaries and perimeters. You take those two things and you weigh them out. And there should not be in your life a small stone and a large. That's an unjust balance. So Proverbs talks about that, which means this. On both, both occasions, you could be in the right season, but in the wrong boundary. You can be in the wrong boundary, a right boundary, but in the wrong season. Either way, either way that will work against you in, in the kingdom of God. You have to balance your life with a right and left by saying, I have to know my seasons and I have to understand my perimeters. Satan wants to change my season, change the times and the laws, Daniel says. And then Isaiah says he wants to remove the boundaries and say, there ain't no problem, you can do that. My, if he can do it, you can do it. Well, if you go for that, then you can see how foolish you have become all of a sudden. So stay in your season. And uh, now I have, um, in, uh, growing up, one of my daughters, uh, my uh, third born, was constantly pushing the boundaries. Anybody ever do that in your home? Push the boundaries? Just always pushing, pushing your parents. They don't want you to yet. You're not, they'll tell you, you're not, but you think you are. So you just keep pushing. Keep, and then when they won't give you what you want because it's not your season, then comes the world technon manifest demon. Well, I can't wait to get out and get my own place. That's what First John says is a technon spermed, if you would, by Satan, offspring of Satan. The technons of Satan. So you got the technons of Christ, you got the technons of Satan, and it says that herein is where the technons of Christ are manifest over the technons of Satan. Jesus said this way, you are of your father the devil, and the deeds of your father you will do. So, do you think that he was thrown out of heaven because he was mature? <laughs> so, do you think he pushed the boundaries that didn't belong to him? Can you also get in other people's perimeters with your ego? Yes, and I'll tell you why that you will learn. I'm gonna share with you uh, possibly this evening, uh, whenever we do it again, but I'm gonna share with you, uh, it goes in this, pro, uh, in, in this uh, order. It's a technon servant we us. The moment the technon come in, God throws you into servanthood. If you learn servanthood, you come into we us. That's the transition. And I'll cover that more thoroughly this evening on showing you, has it ever dawned on you that when as a teenager people ask you to do things? Always. Ever dawned on it, right? Did it, does it bother you at times? Be honest. Yes. Because what are you learning? Servant. Servanthood. And until you learn to serve, you'll never be trusted as a we by Christ. Won't. He just will not do it until you learn to serve. Christ said, I did not come in this world to be served, to be ministered unto, but to minister. He came here as a servant, and because of that, God has highly exalted and brought him into sonship, we And boy, it's precious when you can do that. So I'll take you through that tonight and show you the process and show you why do not dis disdain servanthood. Don't disdain it, disdain it. I'm 62 years of age. Could Christ call on me, in fact, he has up here, to be a servant to somebody while I'm here? You're already doing it. I'm already doing it to y'all. I'm also a servant to a little lady across the river that we're trying to help, whatever her reason for being here. It's an unusual situation, but she's here by herself. To you guys that don't know, she wants to spend the whole summer here by herself. Uh, it's dangerous, it's got some complications to it, but I want to serve her, I want to help her. Went over there after this huge thunderstorm last night, asked her, are you okay? Her stuff got wet, her tent leaked. You know, we've taken her all kinds of stuff, trying to help her out a little bit. Now, what would that make me is that leads me into being mature. You follow me? If I can serve and serve y'all, serve her, that gives me the next level of the manifestation of a weos where I've not manifested yet. So we'll talk with you about the unveiling of the weos, how that operates. But all right, any other, any questions on this at all? Do you see this? So you're basically saying servant is the biggest deal between technology and weos. There's, it's the bridge. You can't get there. You can't get from technology to weos without the servant bridge. You can't do it. Christ set that ordinance. It cannot be done. He will not trust you, unveil you into maturity, accountability, responsibility until you learn his nature. 
who he is. But we'll cover that tonight. Anything else on this right now on the technons of Christ, the technons of Satan? First John. In this are manifest the children of God and the children of Satan. Technon for the both words there, children. This is referring spiritually. 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 Yes, but you can see it in the natural. I mean, she'll see it in the natural where one son is angry at his mom, the other son's not. One daughter hates the dad, the other one loves the dad. That's a biological, also shows you the maturity of that child. Uh, one of the greatest uh, biological immaturities of children is blaming their parents for anything. It doesn't really matter, even if they're wrong. When you start blaming your parents, Jesus said, honor thy father and thy mother. If you do not do this, you're, you will not have a long life. Well, I believe that. I believe the words of Christ. So I think it's dangerous even in that area. So, so it is with, if they do that at home, which we found out, Joe, they do that at home, then when they come into the body of Christ, they'll criticize the leaders. If they murmur and complain against the parents, they'll murmur and complain against the pateres. You follow me, the fathers of the, of, of, of the house, if you would. So it's really a repeated thing until they mature out of that and realize there's nobody my problem but me. I am my worst enemy. You've heard me say, y'all, you, you know it's true. And when I, I wish I learned it when I was growing up. Nobody can make me do anything. My mother doesn't make me mad. My, do, my mother doesn't make me bitter. My mother doesn't make me resentful. I choose to be. It was a choice. Somewhere I cho chose to be mad. And she can't make you mad. You choose it. You understand that? This is not some forced controlled pill that you take and the next thing you know you wake up mad. This is, all of life is about a choice, you guys. Your mom and dad cannot make you mad. They cannot make you angry. They cannot make you bitter. They cannot make you resentful. You choose to be so. So right now, Joey gets up and says, I don't need to listen to this trash. I'm, I'm out of here. Well, I can make a decision. And the decision will be before he hits the barn, I'll have him in the back with a 357 magnet. That's my choice. So you can make that decision or you can say, well, you know, it's really not my problem. Obviously, you, I, I choose not to be disturbed by that. So I could say, man, I was up at We were moving with God and Joey, I mean, the next thing you know, he put, I mean, he made me so mad and I got in the flesh. Joey being blamed for making me mad and getting in the flesh. So I just gave Joey the power of my life when I'm not going to do that. So same old things. Well, I don't like you. I don't like being around you. And I've said to people, you know, I appreciate that. Things about me, I don't like you. But that doesn't mean I don't have to like you. And people don't know what to do with that. Usually, but I don't like you. Well, I don't like you either. I wish I'd never met you. Well, I wish I'd have never met you. You know, that's that 13-year-old high school thing. So if there are technons of, of Satan, would, does he still, does he stay with the same pattern of Napios, Padion, Technon? Same pattern. So he has the same, okay. Now I'll tell you where there are, there are two different variables. The season, he pushes you out of it. The boundaries, he knocks the wall down. I think I told you with my uh, third born daughter, she was constantly outside the perimeters of her maturity constantly pushing and then whatever and, and whatever it was she was always three four years from maturing for her season and she pushed to get it all the time and as she did it became self-destructive and now if you talk to her she'll tell you well I'll tell you what I wish I hadn't done and uh, I wish I'd had time to grow and mature before I became whatever a wife a mother you know you've got to have you can't do this at 16 17 18 you're not ready for it. So he'll push that because he knows it's self-destructive. He knows that you will destroy yourself if he gets to father you. And he will push you outside those perimeters. He'll push you outside your season. So what he does, he's the guy that plucks the fruit while it's green and then puts it out there on the market for people to eat. Now, if I would say it that way, that's what makes America hate preachers. The preachers we're looking at even though they're born again, spirit filled, they're not ready for what they're doing. Uh, you know, Joseph, the reason God sent you and me and all this, He has worked with us all these years to season us. Now I'm 62. Be honest with you, I thought I was going to do this at 38. I hit it at 38. So, all right, this is what I was called to do. And oh my God, was I terribly immature with it. I was just a technon. 32, 38, I mean, but still a technon, self interested. Uh, selfish, self-centered, this is about me, and Jesus saying, you're not even ready for this, it has nothing to do with you. 
This is all about Christ, it's not about you. Well, it took me those next 30 years to get that wrought in me, if you would. And finally, I can say, I like to do this now for the Lord Jesus. I have no self ambition, no, no drive. I have no desire, fame, glory, recognition, money, and none of the above. I don't need the money, don't need the women, not interested in all that. I've got Christ. Well, now I can go out there and here's what it says that the prince of this world comes and has nothing in me. What you've got to know is what he's got, what has he got in you? Does he have something in you? Selfishness, self-centeredness. So, yeah, that's exactly what happens with this worldly way of the satanic technons. Let them get out there and drive the ministry, the cars, before you're ready. Let them get out there and minister before they're ready. Uh, get someone that's really famous, born again, put him out there and let him start talking. So that's what, this is what our nation's about, is a whole bunch of millions of immature, self-centered ministers that's not representing Jesus Christ at all. They're representing themselves. It's a shame. All right, anything else? So back on the, um, like the weos of Satan, his... Technon. Technon. Uh, I suppose there's weos too, yes, go ahead. But his point isn't so much to keep you around once you reach that level, it's just to destroy you before you can recover. That's exactly right. So he's not into keeping you around so no. much as he is. No, he is the guy who's got the voice, can't wait to get out of here. Eat you up. That's the first thing he said in heaven, I can't wait to get out of here. Well, God said, I'm gonna help you. So, but the fact that I can't wait to get out of here, I can't wait to get my own place, I can't wait to be responsible for myself, that's a total self-centered because what's happening is when you begin to say, I can't wait to get out of here, I can't wait to get my own, you are just saying, I'm now dysfunctional in this social setting. This social setting is now, doesn't work for me. It's dysfunctional. I need to set up my own system. Now, if that doesn't sound luciferic, I don't know what does. That's exactly his thinking. Rather than, well, you know, Dad, I appreciate that. I, I can handle that. I can, um, I can come under that and uh, stay here until I season. I'm mature properly. And uh, I know the Lord will mature me here. This is a good point for me, a good place for me. Well, we don't get that. And the few that do it really do grow up very emotionally stable and mature. They're a lot more easy to work with. Regardless of the reason, now look, I know there are times in certain given situations that I have admonished even in counseling, it might be better for you to leave because I know it's not going to work and you're going to be abusive to your mom or your dad or they're going to be abusive to you. At that point, it's, a, it's even a why, it's not God's best. You know, the, the will of God is found on three levels, good, acceptable, and perfect. That's what the scripture says. And we, we strive with you for the perfect will of God. We don't always get that. We want the perfect mate that God's chosen for your life. We don't always get that. It's still a good will and it's acceptable, which means that Greek word there means permissible. So you've actually got, it's okay. God can, God can deal with that. I will permit this this marriage or you getting this vehicle, maybe an Ishmael, I'll permit it, but you're going to pay for it, but I'm going to permit it. Or you can have the perfect. This is what I've chosen for you. Now, here's the same concept in the natural, or let's go back to the natural. You're 13, you can't wait to get a car. 14, can't wait to get a car. Do you think you ought to be on the highway at 13 and 14? You see, you shouldn't even be thinking about that, but that's part of that testosterone well, I can drive. I was 11 years of age. My daddy owned a 46, 1946 Ford pickup truck. The bed was taken off of it and it was made all out of wood. Beautiful little, and it was a big stick shift. I mean, man, you could just, and my brother, he's 19 months older than me, so he would be in 12 to 13, it depends, but, and uh, we're, he's out in, his dad goes to work, so me and my brother, we go out and sit in the truck and we're just, and Roy says, I think I can hot wire this thing. So my brother gets up underneath there around 12 or 13 and he cuts those two wires and we crank it up. Yeah, down the country road we go. We went way up into the mountains, all dirt road. Now, if you guys know, this is small gravel with a lot of finite sand. And we're going up that mountain road and Roy's driving, he's around 12 or 13. We get up there. I said, let me drive, man, I'm gonna drive going back. And he said, you can't drive this. I said, yes, I can. So I start driving it and he kept saying, going too fast, we're going too fast. And I, 11 years of age, I know what I'm doing. 
That's exactly what I said. I missed this curve, ran out in the ditch because I was going too fast, and we just rolled and flipped. We tore the bed off of it, smashed that truck into, into sardine cans. Me and my brother got really hurt, and I couldn't even talk for hours. Just couldn't talk. And uh, we, when we finally, I walked home. Uh, we had to both walk home, obviously. Sitting there waiting for my daddy to come home. We had, my mother made us sit there all day till he got home. And we sat there on that couch for hours waiting for daddy to get home off work. Well, the, the bottom line was, here, here is the technon, if you would have Satan. Even though it's not the same biological years, you know, my brother was 13, but you follow me? If my brother had a hot wired, it's it my brother's fault. Right. My brother made me wreck that truck. <laughs> so, no, I took, I'm responsible for my stupid decision. But here you are, you've got two technons, so to speak. Now, technically, you're right, I'm 11 or 12, forget that, right? You're still in that zone. Because I, I came into maturity early. So, I can say I was mature at 11. So, here I'm with two technons, hot wiring his daddy's pickup truck, both of them believing can do it. I can do it. I know what I'm doing. And uh, should have stayed under my daddy's rule for another five years, for every, six years for he, then he could take me out and teach me to drive. Well, that doesn't happen. You don't have to teach me to drive. I know how to do this. Nobody teaches teenagers today because they, they just, somehow you come out of the womb knowing how to do everything. It's a marvelous di uh, generation. It must be the, uh, it's got to be what they feed the chickens. It's got to be what's in the meat. So, all right. <laughs> Any other questions here? Brother Randy. Yes. Um, no, you're saying as, as technology, you do be responsible, but you know how, how you said, well, I can do this myself. How do you, what's the difference between, okay, being responsible for your time season that time, but not saying, well, I can do it by myself? Attitude. Attitude, really? Simply the attitude of the heart. It's, it's of the heart in the spirit. Okay. Uh, you? You, but you know, here's the thing that uh, me and Johnny get together to build some stairs yesterday. I mean, we've been, we've been working carpentry, I mean, but we have to face the fact that we can do this, but we're not too sure exactly how to do certain things. And you got, so you come into it humbly and saying, well, I know we can, we'll eventually get it done, but you still have to say, I'm not too sure at 62 even, and I've done it for, gosh, I guess 40 years. But you still have to, there's a humility of life, Caleb, that's imperative to even knowing exactly what you're doing. You still could approach that humbly. There doesn't have to be no arrogance and haughtiness to it. There's a certain sense, of, well, I believe we can do this, guys. What do you think? Well, I think we can. Well, let's see. Let's take a shot at this. So you're still being responsible, but you still having a humble heart just in case you don't really know what you're doing. Or something. Yeah, you just don't need to be arrogant about it. You know, there's just no need to be arrogant. And there's a haughtiness to it. I don't mind telling you that you teenagers can rub us, boy, because that type of attitude and haughtiness, and it comes with the boasting, and you can feel like, like a fog of satanic around it. Whew, man, this guy's got some help. And uh, this is that, it's what the Bible talks about being uh, independent. Independence is a certain lawlessness. And Satan was perfect in all his ways until iniquity, and that word iniquity means self-centered awareness hit him. Iniquity, lawlessness, disobedience, unruly, and which all that means is I live by no rules, uh, I'm disorderly, I have no order, which means my life is a life of chaos. And that is really the teen's years until Christ really teaches you how to stop doing that. Now look, I'm going to tell you again, the most, the greatest conflict in the world are with youth, period, in every area, from seven to 20, so I mean from uh, 13 to 20, that seven year period is the most difficult conflict by parents, society, everything. And they, they are the group that think they know everything and can do everything. And they're the ones that impose themselves as technons of Satan upon society and just cause all kinds of havoc wherever we go. So it's a shame that we do it, they do it, but what I'm trying to do in the kingdom of God is get you out of the cosmos system into the kingdom of God and let your teen year season, according to the, even the biological ordinances of God, your times and seasons are in his hands. Teach me to number my days. Teach me to number my days, Jesus. Let me know what season I'm in and let me relax with that because look, you're going to mature into all these seasons naturally anyway. You understand? You, first of all, uh, 
You, you need to relax. You're going to have a house. You're going to have a car. You're going to have a truck. You're going to have a home. You're going to have a wife. You're going to have children. All that's going to happen anyway. So what, what's the big rush on all of this? Wait until your time comes. And I'm telling you what your wife doesn't need. Your wife doesn't need to be married to a selfish, immature little boy. She needs a man. And uh, if you fuss and fight with your mama all the time, this is what concerns me even about my own son, one of them. If you fuss and fight and fault your mother all the time, you're already bent toward female indictment, accusation and judgment. It's already wrought in you by Satan's technon. So I've seen the Satan's technons right here. I've seen it. While Satan is teaching and training you, when Jesus Christ said, don't do this and you'll do it anyway, then you tell me what it is. If Jesus biblically tells you, honor your father and your mother, and you don't, and you justify yourself, how can you justify yourself? You're being fathered by Satan. He's, now, you've got to keep this in mind. He's teaching you to fault your parents, accuse them, indict them. And I gotta keep, you've got to keep in mind, because he points out their faults. I, when he started this on me, I said to him, what fault did you find in your father that brought you to can't wait to get out of here. I want to take one or third of the angels with me. You understand, where, where, what fault did he have in the perfect father? Tell me how you got to blame in God Almighty for your condition you're in. So if he blames God, which he does, for the condition he's in, is he not full of that in teaching you, sperming you, if you would, offspring of Satan, teaching you how to murmur and complain about against authority? Now, the reason that you seem to justify, well, my mom and my dad's got their problems. Well, of course they do. But I had to ask him, don't be telling me what my mom and dad's problems is. Tell me how you faulted God. I'd like to know how you put that together. So you see the problem? So we're going to have to get, get away from all this and, and get back into really back into where you're supposed to be. Now, look, the world's probably going to mock you and laugh you, at you. What are you doing at home at 18 and 19? Let me tell you biblically the season of God. This is exactly how it's supposed to. I'm going to give you the perfect. It hardly ever works, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. You are never, never to be on your own in life anywhere. You are never to be out from under any authority ever. No time whatsoever. You are to never be without a covering of, a, of divine authority. Here's how it operates. You are born, God sets you in a family. You stay in that family. Just, if, all you got to do is read Genesis all the way through. When they, the, other than Samson, these independent guys, and Samson, Samson was an independent man. You look at the, the darkness of his, even, even though he had the gift, he was totally immature. So forgetting him as our example, when we get into the Isaac Rebecca principle, I'll show you how that operates. And this is what happened. that simply means this. You stay at home under authority until the appointed time of your father. He will send you a woman, being a male. He will, he will bring her to you. The scripture says he will bring her to you. That's the ordinance. You don't have to go out and look in the nightclubs for her. He will bring her to you. And uh, when he does, then you, you go from one family to another family without transition. Do you remember, this is not some, supposed to be some type of uh, useless uh, tradition in America. They walk the bride down, the father's supposed to, and says, he gives her at that time to the groom-to-be, right? The reason is that she's never without a covering. Right now, and I've always wanted to do that, and I, I did it with all three of mine. I'm grateful to be able to walk down that aisle with them and tra turn them over that day to their husband. Now they've gone from their father being the head of the family to their husband being the head of their lives. So are they ever without a head? No. And I know the males try to go the independent thing, and the females do, do today, but the truth is there should be nobody without authority in the earth. It's too dangerous. So then I would ask you this, by the ordinance of God in the earth, is it not true everywhere you go, you have to deal with authority? Tell, tell me where you can go, even to this little, little store up here on the road. You can't walk in there unless you give account to somebody. True or not? 
So Jesus Christ has set up there's no place in the world, no place in the world that you can go without being under authority. So that being the case, what we're trying to do is get out uh, from undercover and get on our own. And the reason you want to get out and on your own is so you don't have to listen to nobody tell you what to do anymore. That's all that is. That's a lawlessness. So. So where does that leave me? Well, uh, I wouldn't worry about that. I, I would mature now. That see, I mean that not see that time is over. It's already been done. Don't worry about it. And I'm glad you mentioned that because now that's not repairable. It shouldn't be. Uh, that now that you've done it what and do you mean by repairable before you move on. Well, uh, you can't go back and relive that. Right. There's no re there's no way that will work. Uh, at times, as I've said. Be either because of the parent or because of the child, it needs to be done. You understand that? I actually believe that yours needed to be done, and I'll leave the reasonings to myself. It wasn't God's perfect for you, but now you can still get it. Now, the way you get it is you still come up here, you come under authority of a pater, martial pater, you still develop your sonship, you follow me? and keep on mature and then that will still come. That, that will still come. You just won't be in the same setting. Sure. But see, at the same time, like I said that when I was uh, aware of that, I really sought God on it with you. I have to tell you, and I, I went to Jeff and I said, I have to tell you, it isn't God's perfect, but something is not gonna happen where he can have it. So therefore, we'll make some lemonade out of that lemon. Sure. If talk about it later, I'd like to hear the transition between my dad moving away. Right. And then I moved in with my brother. Well, that's the one thing we're talking about. If your dad moves, which he did, he moved uh, geographically away from what you already knew was God's will for your life. Yeah. That, and you know, uh, that dad, we're not, I just don't believe we're supposed to do this. I mean, I can't speak for you, but I know that I'm not supposed to do that. This is, God's not calling me to another city. And that's the reason I said, I think at that time, uh, it absolutely was uh, a good move. But you remember I'm saying it was a good, good move. And it was permissible, and the Lord uh, protected you anyway. And interestingly enough, uh, son, you really did, um, even you've had a few little things, but you really did handle it pretty good. I have to admit, I mean, you've handled it much more mature than most young teens out on their own, because man, next thing you know, they're partying, drinking, I mean, uh, on the internet, pornography, I mean, that's pretty typical. Right. And uh, you know, it's a funny thing, when I went to college, the first time I'd come out from under my mom and dad and went to college, and I remember the first thing I did now, <laughs> I went out and bought me a case of Dr. Pepper and a whole bunch of Snicker bars and Cheetos, because those are the things I constantly was resisted on. And I thought, boy, my big rebellion, I really drunk it up, man. I got drunk on Dr. Pepper, <laughs> took me a Snicker bar and sniffed it. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> it was a big rebellious moment for me. But uh, my mom and dad, uh, my brother and I both stayed at home till we were both in our 20s. And my mom, and no one ever said a word. We never, but we didn't fuss and fight. See, I didn't fight with my mom and dad. My brother didn't fight with my mom and dad. My mom and dad was never our problem. Though I never felt loved or wanted by her, and I found out later, you know, she tried to abort me, but the fact of the matter is, you know, it, it was still my mom. I never thought about, I never thought, neither did my brother. And we were unregenerate until I was 20. I never thought about turning any of my attention of attack or approach upon or, or disrespect to my parents. Really? Never, no, no, neither did my brother. We did not, this generation is majoring in it. But you go back to my generation, there, that was not done. We, parents were never, and we didn't, and we also, by the way, did not fault the teachers at school. And that's an epidemic today. The youth like to blame adults. Now that's luciferic, that's technons of Satan. So, you don't, uh, you're still wanting to touch authority. All he's trying to do is still touch authority. It's the cop's fault. It's the teacher's the fault. No, it's not. It's the, it's the pastor's fault. Well, it's the elder's fault. Well, it's my mom's. No, it's not the dad's fault. This is how it's passed along with the youth today. And uh, because the youth are not coming into responsibility and maturity. If you have that, you drop that at this river, on this river this week, and don't take it back with you. Put away, I like what the prophet said, put away the pointing of the finger. 
Boy, I love that verse. Put away the pointing of the finger. And so at the point you, you quit, well, you know, if it wasn't for, no, you put it away, put it away. And uh, three th primary scriptures that I've used to deliver me, put away the pointing of the finger, uh, the scapegoat, if you ever studied that, scapegoat in Old Testament out, and blame game. Those three are the uh, scriptures that come to those that 